Okay, let me rewrite these numbers so that you don't have lines thrown. So this is section 2-5. It's a box and whisker plot. So we're just going to show you how to do that. All right, so uh, go ahead and take a second, write this, these data numbers down. We'll go through on how to construct these, the steps to do it. Uh, box and whisker plots are easy. The problem why people struggle with them is they don't put it to a scale. And then to me, box and whisker plots mean nothing. If, if you don't put it to a scale, then the whole idea is to see how your scores are spread out. And if you just always draw them the same every single time, then they're worthless because they don't, we don't get to physically see what's happening. And here's what I mean. So most people, when they do box and whisker plots, they just do the same thing every time. They draw the box, they do this, they put a dot, and they put a dot. And then they'll just say, oh, this is 2, this is 10, this is 22, this is 24, and this is 25. And then I will take off minus 5 out of 6 points. Because it means nothing. Maybe this graph looked like this. In, in, when it's perfectly scaled right. And then maybe like 22 was here. 24 was here and 25 was there. There's a big difference between this and this. And so the whole idea of a box, box and whisker plot is to look at it and say, oh, 25% of the people are here. But look up here, it looks like it's a way bigger number of people and it's not. Oh, look at here, this is the difference between those. Okay, and so you have to scale it or it means absolutely nothing. Okay, I get it, you found these numbers, but really what do they mean in terms of a scale, okay? So just make sure you put it on a number line. That's all you gotta do, okay? All right, here we go. <coughs> so, <coughs> here are the steps. Number one. Since you are finding the median three times, the median three times, you have to put your data in order. Whenever you find the median, it always has to be in order, okay? So let's take a minute, let's put this data in order. So it looks like our lowest score is nine. You know, the best good thing about your test is that, you know, you'll have the test, you can cross things off as you write them out, okay? So I'm gonna do that, I'm just kinda crossing them off to make sure I count for everything. Then I have, what, a 16, 17. Then I have a 19, 19 and a 20. Another good thing to do, three 19s. three 19s, is this, and I would have caught this. Anytime I rewrite my data, I quickly count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know I didn't, so I, if I didn't count it, I would have noticed that I missed that 19, okay? It's always good to count it. Usually <laughs> in the instructions, I'll say, hey, the following 10, quiz, you know, the following represents 10 quiz scores. I mean, I'll tell you there's 10 entries. All right, first step, put them in order. Okay, step two, find the median. Some textbooks will call this Q2, quartile two. Q represents quartile. Because a box and whisker plot breaks up your data into quarters. 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, okay? So here we go. Now, don't scribble your numbers out, only put a slash through them, because you have to use them more than once. So don't cross it off where you can't read it. So notice I have two numbers left. What is the middle of 16 and 17? 16.5. Now notice what I do. I put a line right between those, and I just say 16.5. Okay? Step three, you are going to find the lower median. The lower median. This is referred to as Q1, quartile one. 
So you always have to find the median first. Now here's what I like to do. I just put a box around all the numbers less than 16.5. Anything that falls below 16.5 is goes into that box. Now we just find the median again. There we go. Nine crosses off, 16, 12, 14. I'm left with 13. So there's my lower median, quartile one. Okay, next step, find the upper median, Q3, Q3. We just do exactly the same thing. The upper median, I put a box around all the numbers greater than 16.5, and I find the median of that. So you see, you just find in the median three times. So 17, 20, 19, 19, my median is 19. Okay, step five, which I feel is the most important step, choose an appropriate scale. Okay, go by ones, go by threes, go by sevens, go by tens, and just look at your data. Look at the lowest number to the highest number. If I'm going from nine to 99, then I'm probably going by tens. Okay, just pick a scale. Uh, I don't think nine to 20 is that hard to do, so I'm probably just gonna go by ones. But maybe you feel, no, I would have gone by twos, and that's perfectly fine. Just label your scale, use the same scale. I had somebody last hour do this, Let me finish this. I'm thinking, making sure I remember right. A uh, person last hour went like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then they changed it by twos. Don't do that. You've got to be consistent. It's all ones or all twos. Don't change it right in the middle. Okay? So all I did is I labeled it from nine. I went from, I always go one below and one above. Eight to 21. Now we just draw the stuff. Here we go. 16.5. I'll just put a line right above 16.5. Again, I like to label my values, just so, especially if they're decimals, then I know exactly what you're doing. Then I go to 19, and then I go to 13. So here is the box. So that's the box portion. And when I look at this, I'm kind of like, well, I can clearly see that this is a little bit bigger than that. So this 25% is more people were spread out in this group than this group, but not by much, right? Not by much. Your last step are your whiskers. And your whiskers are just your highest and lowest values. Your highest and your lowest. Our lowest score was a nine. So there's my whisker to there and my highest was 20. There you go. So I can kind of, and here's how this works. A box and whisker plot breaks everything up into 25%. 25% of the people got between a nine and a 13. 25% of the people got between a 13 and a 16.5. 25% of the people, 25% of the people. So here's kind of what I look at. This 25% were pretty low scores and they're spread out. This 25% were pretty darn all on the same page, right? They're only one point different. And so I can visually see how things work. But again, if you just do this every time, we don't get to see that. We don't get to see how values are stretched out. Any questions? Box and whisker plots, easy to do. Now, this happens today, by the way, let me just do this. You don't have to write this down. This always messes people up too. Okay. When you're finding the median of this, notice we're left with just one number. That is my median. So when you do a box to find your lower median, what numbers are going to be affected? Yeah, everything below this 11. So I would just put a box around those, and I would put a box around those, okay? And then also another thing that messes people up is when this happens, nine, 10, 11. They're like, well, 
11 is the median, so I guess I don't include this. This 11 is below that, so I would still put a box around that. Is that making sense? So that's why whenever I find the median, I always do this, and I clearly can see what numbers are below it and what numbers are above it. Because it's frustrating, like you do all this work, and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot, to, I forgot this 11, and it messes it all up, okay? So write out your data, put boxes around it, makes perfectly good sense. That's it for chapter two, okay? So here's what I'd like you to do. On page 109, I'm gonna have you do three box and whisker plots. 11, 12, and 25. 11, 12, and 25, okay? Ignore all the instructions. If they ask you to do a quartile summary, if they ask you to list Q1, Q2, Q2, just, just do this. Just draw me a box and whisker plot to scale. That's telling me all your answers. You don't have to label these 25s either. I was just letting you see that. This is what I want right there, okay? Then, let's go back to 78. We did 49 on Friday, let's do 50. Just one more time of practicing that really long table, okay? Again, only do the first two rows. Only do the first two rows. Don't do all the data, okay? So, on number 50 on page 78, tell me the standard deviation for grouped data. Exactly what you did on Friday. We'll review tomorrow um, and then test on Friday or Wednesday. I can't remember how long the test takes. I, I know it takes time because it takes time to do a frequency distribution table. It takes time to do this. There's eight columns. It takes time to do standard deviations. So, got to be fast. So is that really all I missed? So, on Friday we took a quiz and we did page 78-49. Then on Wednesday we did, or on Thursday we did page 93. It's on the board back there, page 93, 13, 29 32. And then on Wednesday we did worksheet 2-4. Okay. All right, I'm gonna come around. If you can have it out Thursdays and Friday's assignments, if you want, you could put this assignment right on, I'm just gonna try to come around and check out homework a lot of the time. So you could just keep your homework on a running page if you'd like. 